Hi Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu, welcome back to my channel. For centuries, scientists have believed that the universe was filled with a mysterious substance called ether. Ether was thought to be the medium through which light traveled, and it was also believed to be the substance that held the celestial bodies in place. In this video, we're going to talk about what fills space, so let's begin. The first person to propose the existence of ether was Aristotle back in the 4th century BC. Aristotle believed that ether was a fifth element along with earth, air, fire and water. He thought that ether was this pure, heavenly substance that made up the celestial bodies like stars and planets. Even as late as the 17th and 18th century, ether played a major role in our understanding of the universe. At the time, it was believed that light was a wave and that it was impossible for the transmission of light and other forms of electromagnetic radiation through space without a medium to carry it. Maxwell was able to use the concept of ether to unify the laws of electricity and magnetism. He showed that electricity and magnetism were two aspects of the same phenomenon and that they were both mediated by ether. This concept then helped Maxwell in his development of the Maxwell's equations, a set of four equations that describe the behavior of electromagnetic fields and their interactions with electric charges and currents that are still used today. By the 19th century, it was known that the planets were orbiting the sun, but it was still not clear what force was keeping them in orbit. And it was known that objects with mass attract each other, but again, it wasn't clear what force was causing this attraction. Sir Isaac Newton assumed the existence of this all-pervading substance that was responsible for transmitting forces and governing the motions of bodies in space. But he believed that ether was a fluid rather than a solid. He believed that this substance was necessary to explain the movements of celestial bodies, which he saw as being governed by gravitational forces acting through the medium of ether. However, there were also a number of problems with the ether theory. One problem was that it was difficult to explain how ether could exist without being detected. And since ether was a very subtle substance, how could it interact with matter? As Newton's understanding of mechanics and gravitation developed, he then began to question the idea of ether. In his later work, he suggested that gravity could be explained without the need of an intervening medium altogether, and he expressed his doubts about the existence of ether. So in 1887, the Michelson-Morley experiment failed to detect any motion of the Earth through an ether medium. The experiment was designed to measure the speed of light in two perpendicular directions, but it showed that the speed of light was the same in both directions, regardless of the motion of the Earth. This result was unexpected if the Earth was moving through a stationary ether medium because the ether should have been dragged along with the Earth's motion, unless there was no such medium. As a result of this experiment and many others, scientists began to abandon the ether theory. In its place, they developed a new theory of light that did not require the existence of ether at all. This new theory, called the theory of relativity, showed that light was not a wave traveling through a medium, but instead a particle called a photon. Today, we often hear that space is instead a vacuum, a region where exists no particles or matter. However, this is also not quite true. Space is not a perfect vacuum. It still contains a low density of particles like hydrogen and helium, photons, neutrinos, and cosmic rays. It's also filled with energy fields like electromagnetic and gravitational fields. These fields can exist in the absence of matter and particles, and they can interact with each other to produce a variety of physical phenomena. These are things such as the bending of light by gravity or the propagation of electromagnetic waves. The density of matter in interstellar space is about one atom per cubic centimeter, while the density of matter in intergalactic space is about one atom per cubic meter. This means that space is about 100 times emptier than the best vacuum that we could create on Earth. So our current understanding is that space is not filled with a solid ether or even a liquid ether. It's not empty, 
but it is very close to being empty. So what of ether now? Well, it's not all lost. Even Albert Einstein refers to ether when talking about the gravitational field within general relativity, and there are still papers that are being published on the subject all the time. Some physicists believe that ether is a necessary component of quantum mechanics to describe quantum entanglement and even to explain dark matter. The abandonment of the ether theory was a major turning point in the history of physics. It showed that the universe was not as simple as scientists had first thought, and it opened up new possibilities for the understanding of the nature of reality. So our story of ether is a reminder that science is always evolving, and as we learn more about the universe, our theories must change to accommodate new evidence. The ether theory was a great theory for its time, but it was eventually replaced by an even better theory and this is the way of science and it's what makes it such a powerful tool for understanding the world around us that's all for this week's video if you enjoyed it please don't forget to leave me a like share and subscribe